It's uh, my distinct honor and pleasure to have the President of the Republic of Malawi, President Lazarus Chakwera, to speak with us about his vision for the topic we've had today. We've been talking a lot about, obviously it's there in the name of our events, the next three billion, how we connect people, how we ensure that we bring more people into, connect more people to the global, the modern global economy. And um, Malawi is a country that has uh, undertaken a lot of changes uh, under the president's watch. And we, we're going to learn a little bit about some of the um, strategies you've employed in ensuring that more people uh, can get connected. So I'll, I'll, I'll open with the sort of the, the broad question as to what your vision generally is with regards to connectivity, how that fits into moving the country forward, transforming the economy in general. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Yinka. In this era of uh, digital revolution, connectivity becomes a vital force in driving national economic growth. And yet in Africa, you know, we remain largely disconnected. Mm -hmm. uh, with just 36% of the continent having access to the internet. And this is a digital divide that must be addressed, and it must be addressed with urgency. Mm -hmm. Although Malawi's situation is not any better than that of Africa, our connectivity rate is now at 37.9% as of 2023, but it must be viewed from the perspective that in 2020, we only had 18%. Okay. And so we believe that we have made significant strides and achieved a transformative shift that underscores the potential of digitalization in reshaping our economy. COVID-19 pandemic starkly highlighted the consequences of limited digital access by disproportionately affecting our most vulnerable communities and public institutions adversely. We have learned that digitalization is not just a tool, but a critical mm. driver of economic progress. A World Bank study shows that a 10% increase in internet penetration can boost GDP by up to 2%. Hmm. And so it underscores the fact that economic potential is there through connectivity. Moreover, digitalization provide, uh, promotes government transparency. We want everything out in the open, expands domestic revenue, and enhances service delivery. So Malawi's long-term development plan we call it Malawi 2063 vision, it has identified industrialization and digitalization as key pillars right. in our development strategy. Now, briefly, that vision talks about Malawi becoming an increasingly uh, a wealthy and self-reliant industrialized nation, upper middle income economy okay. by 2063, which will be about 100 years. It's patterned after the Africa we want, yeah. Agenda 2063. But we want to bring it as fast as we can. And so we believe that the groundwork now in national plans by prioritizing affordable ac connectivity, expanding digital infrastructure, leveraging regional data corridors, and fostering digital literacy. Our partnerships with innovative platforms such as Starlink illustrate our commitment to making internet access universal and reliable. I have several uh, points here that I wanted right. you to understand and to know in order for us to harness this for economic growth. Let, let me try and get to a, a couple of points, because I'm interested in, you talked about that move from 18% yeah. to 37%. And, and I, what's, what happened there? Was it something you did as a government? Was it some sort of uh, changes in the environment, or is it just natural organic growth, or as you know, 
more well, people want to come online. <laughs> Uh, if we leave you the chance, it's not going to happen. Right, so we right. had to intentionally uh, work with our uh, regulator authority, mm -hmm. work with uh, private sector companies in order for us to have that kind of synergy. Mm -hmm. Our data was um, one of the highest on the continent. Now it is mean, the cheapest. Mean, it's, yes, in terms of the costs, right. Yes, it is now the cheapest. But did, did, did you have to enforce that? I mean, these are private companies, yeah. obviously. Uh, did you have to enforce that in some way? Did you have to put in some new rules? How, how, does, this, how does this work? We have put, pretty much put policies in place that enables them to expand without having to feel us uh, breathing down their necks. And so we feel like this is a way that the private sector can really thrive in an environment in which uh, we want, um, like if you find a village has, nobody has any shoes on and then you celebrate because you say now, tomorrow I'll bring me pairs of shoes. Mm. And so with lack of connectivity, now we are discovering that we need, for example, gadgets that will enable more people to get connected right. because the infrastructure is there. So, so, so with, with the gadgets, so are you talking, in, in terms of personal devices and smart yeah. devices that people will use smart. to, yes, <laughs> to, to, access, to access these, um, these services, be they you know, government services or you know, just entertainment, it could be anything obviously. Mm -hmm. How um, are you thinking about uh, the VAT you've had on devices? Uh, I, I read that some of them are as high as 17.5%. Um, is that something that you are considering uh, reducing or cutting? I, I was talking to South African uh, Minister for Communications uh, you know, this week, and he, he told me that this is something that they're focused on. I was wondering if you, you're thinking the same way in Malawi in terms of making these, these devices more affordable for... Yeah, what we have people. done is to have consortiums, and we are talking with various... Um, uh, investors, okay. and some have actually shown interest uh, so that uh, they could begin assembling devices within the country and for the region oh, at okay. affordable prices. And um, we feel like this will be the way to leapfrog all this. By getting investors to come in and making it cheaper. That's right. And, affordable. and they can do a PPP deal, a private a public partnership uh, style thing, or they can just come invest. We have actually pass legislation that encourages investors to come with the needed laws so they get their business protected right. in as much as the country benefits from the creation of jobs and so forth. So uh, we feel like this is the right time to move into Malawi. And how much interest has there been so far from investors or operators who want to come into Malawi? Uh, at, at this point, it sounds enticing, but... Um, I wonder how much... Uh, well, they will have some tax rebate, but these things we have left um, a kind of a corridor where you can navigate and uh, negotiate uh, whatever it would be best for you and for the country. Uh, we feel like uh, we should be flexible mm -hmm. so that uh, we don't get broken in the process, uh, but we can work with anyone who wants to come and invest, and uh, we have pretty much set the infrastructure where it shouldn't take more time than is needed. I, I also want to get to um, financial inclusion because I know that's also an important part of your, important part of your vision. Right. I, um, of, you have, I, I think uh, last year, somewhere around mid last year, you had about 11 million mobile money wallets. I mean, do you, um, how are you thinking about trying to increase that number, trying to get that penetration um, to rise in the country. Do you have any particular strategies or are you pleased? Well, with you all just need to understand that the mean age for Malawi is 18. Right. You are dealing with young people who are already, you don't even need to convince them. They are already sold onto this. What we need is to make sure that now we have um, uh, opened up space for them to be able to thrive. They're doing business. They're uh, some are even getting engaged in, in agricultural uh, production, big time. Uh, 
Um, and so they will need all of the help they need uh, for them to be able to prosper in their businesses, creating more jobs, creating more wealth, and making sure that everybody has something to do. And that will be enhanced through uh, uh, digital uh, enhancement. And, and moving a little bit away from digital, although I think these, are, these things are all connected, when you think about um, the economy, the broad economy, and, and thinking about trying to um, see expansion mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of the broader economy um, and alleviate poverty uh, in Malawi, what are your sort of, as you think for the next sort of five years, you talk about 20 to 63, but even over the next five years, um, what, how are you thinking about the key areas you're trying to focus on uh, for the country uh, for alleviating poverty? And so for us, um, uh, you know, in trying to reach that Malawi 2063 vision, yes. we have developed a 10-year implementation plan. But within that, we also have uh, developed what I call an ATM strategy, so that agricultural productivity and uh, industrialization, mechanization, commercialization, agriculture as big business, uh, with all the value chains, so we have uh, value addition done in the country. This creates more jobs for everyone. Uh, and then tourism. Uh, we put much emphasis uh, on establishing infrastructure, uh, making sure we have good roads, we have hotels. The lake, Lake Malawi, is one of the most beautiful lakes you will ever find on planet Earth. With variegated tropical fish, you can't find anywhere on planet Earth. And you need to visit that clear water lake, uh, third largest in Africa. It is a marvel to watch. And so we have tours, uh, we have shows. Lake of Stars is uh, bringing artists from all over the world and, uh, and many more. And then we have majestic mountains, uh, tallest in southern Africa. Uh, we have hills and valleys that just take your breath away. But we need the infrastructure. Up north, uh, we need people to visit, uh, you know, uh, the plateau there. That is almost like Europe. Uh, the weather is so different. It's almost raining every time of the year. But you can then invest in that. You need connectivity to be able to do all of that. Mm -hmm. You need the internet to be able to do some of that uh, uh, business. Thirdly, we have emphasized mining. We have rare earth, we have uh, uranium, we have, in fact, even alluvial gold, which shows you that you have, there's a belt. We thought we never had this. We have the largest deposits of rutile and graphite, and the green economy of tomorrow will depend largely on some of these and the development of some of these minerals. And so we are thinking Malawi is poised, uh, really, uh, to grow exponentially if we do the right things and the foundation of which we have laid now, we think we are ready to take off. I mean, the, the tension that we see in so many countries, particularly around mining and the green economy, is this concern that, and I know you will say this as well, we, we do not want our countries to be exploited and get left behind and in, in this new green economy. I'm sure uh, you would think you would say the same thing. Mm -hmm. What's, what sorts of steps are you taking to ensure that? Because the, the argument is how do we move up the value chain, right? right? How do we not just be somewhere from which we are extracted? How are we a part of We are already batteries encouraging people to uh, do the value addition within the country like we already have uh, someone uh, uh, purifying the gold that people are getting along our rivers and stuff within the country. We want people to be able to add value to whatever they have within Malawi. And uh, we have the advantage of being the, almost the uh, uh, last kid on the block because uh, we never thought we had any minerals. And so now we are taking advantage of those who've had experience along this line, talking to our uh, friends in Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Botswana, for example. 
and uh, making sure that we have international teams of lawyers helping us to say, uh, rather than get a raw deal, um, let's read the small print in right. some of the right. uh, mining agreements that people just get so easily uh, uh, you know, signed right. and then they never thought that they had entangled themselves. Right. Right. So we wanted to do that, but we know that we can't be as perfect and so like in a vehicle, you are able to maneuver and, and uh, drive it if it is moving, not stationary. So we have recently signed three mining agreements and we hope that uh, we'll go on uh, to do something better than uh, uh, we have been, been able to do in the past. Where, where's most of the interest come from uh, internationally? Internationally, we have uh, uh, local uh, folks that want to invest. Uh, some Malawians who have uh, been working in South Africa uh, uh, and have established businesses there, they want to come. We have, uh, from down under in Australia, uh, people that have uh, shown interest. And in fact, uh, we even had some who uh, were mining uranium at some point. And then we have people from Europe, we have people from the United States uh, who have already moved in and have gotten licenses to do. So we're getting everyone from everywhere. Okay. Mr. President, unfortunately, we have run out of time. Oh, I didn't. Oh, my uh, yes, goodness. Yes, we have run out of time. <laughs> it's an excellent conversation. And if nothing else, if nothing else, everyone here needs to go to Lake Malawi. That's yeah. the big lesson we've learned. That's it. <laughs> That's Thank it. you very much. Sir. You're all welcome to the warm heart of Africa. <laughs> <laughs>
please um, give them an applause. We really appreciate them. Thank you very much. And lastly, um, our, our young company, as I mentioned earlier, we're about to turn two years old. Um, if you want to come to our birthday party, just let us know. We're, we're having a few parties in DC, New York, here and there, maybe in Lagos. Um, and, um, but we, we are very focused on live convenings like this that are based around journalism. And we actually invite all of you to join us uh, in October in Washington, DC for our next major event of this nature, which is called the Semaphore World Economy Summit against the backdrop of the IMF World Bank meetings. So please come, you can go to our website, you can sign up, um, and please sign up for our news products. They're, they're, they're impartial, balanced, and intelligent, and very global. And uh, I think it'll make your life better, and certainly your news, your news knowledge and insights better. So thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it very much.